Don Bailey, we've got a center here that needs to be ground. This is a 60 degree angle and there's several ways to do it. I'm gonna give you a couple of ways uh, in the back, but we're gonna show you here up front first as to how we grind it and why it's important. The concentricity between the center and the OD is very important. And let me show you what I mean by that. If we have, and I'm gonna exaggerate this so you get a better idea. If we have a center like so, and if this is the center line, and we want this area right here to be concentric with the OD, why? Let me exaggerate if it's off, giving you a bigger view. If the center line is here, and that center is ground without the proper concentricity, when you go to rotate it, as an example, if you rotate this 180 degrees, well now we've got a center that's like that, and we are, let me do that again. I don't like that picture. Okay, so we've got another center here, and this time, it's up here. So if this is off 10 thousandths, let's say, or 5,000, doesn't matter, 3,000, two tenths. If it's off, when you rotate the center, you're gonna be moving your part up and down. So let's go over here to the bench center, Glenn. I'll show you what I'm talking about. These are a couple of parts. This is a, ted, a tailstock and headstock from our bench center. And if I had this, if I ground this, center right here, and if I rotate it again, and if it's off 10 thousandths, it's gonna be that way. When I rotate it the other direction, it's gonna be down 10 thousandths. Well, obviously, if I have a part in there, and if these centers don't run concentric with the OD, we've got a problem. So that's number one. So it's important that we get the concentricity right. Now, how do we grind the center? That's kind of critical. There are a number of ways to do it, and we're gonna go in the back and I'm gonna show you one way that we recommend doing it. Could I grind this on an ID grinder? Uh, I could, maybe, with the right ID grinder. Would I grind it there? No. Could I grind it on an OD grinder? Yes, if I have the right OD grinder. Some of the OD grinders, the headstock will swivel and you can turn it to the proper degrees. In this case, it's 30 degrees for 60 degree included. So yes, you can rotate the headstock and you come in with your grinding wheel and grind it on an angle like that. We don't happen to have that capability to do it that way, but there are three ways you can do it on a surface grinder. One way is to dress an angle on the wheel like so. You get a good shot of that, Glenn? Oh yeah. And as you can see, if we came in here at that, the proper angle, we can then grind our center accordingly. That's one way. Another way would be to come in here and grind it on the side. The other way would be to tip it up on a sign plate and grind it on an angle, which is the way we're going to do in the back. So we're gonna take you in the back and we're gonna show you how we would grind it on a sign plate using the wheel that's ground, that's been dressed flat and parallel to the surface of the surface grinder. So we're going to take our master grind, we're gonna bolt it on a sign plate, we're gonna indicate this to make sure that it's running concentric, because as we talked about, that's very important. We'll get that running within a couple of tenths. And then we're gonna mount the master grind on the sign plate, we're gonna tip it up to 30 degree angle, and we're gonna grind it. Okay, so now we have this center that we can't grind because uh, you may recall the one that we ground had a straight shaft, but this one has a taper in it. So how, do, how on earth do we grind this point by putting it in a spin fixture with this taper in it because you can't hold it right? So Jim, uh, hand me that adapter, thank you. Here we have a solid socket for number two Morris taper and that fits into it like so because it has a female taper inside of it, snugs in like that and now we have a straight shaft, so we can put that on our 
uh, index fixture and we can grind our 60 degree angle. Let's go back and we'll show you how we're going to do it. Cleanliness, key in the shop. This is our point of reference. Remember the surface plate is flat. It's supposed to be within a few millions. So we've already cleaned it with ammonia and we've got what I consider to be a perfect surface now. No grease on my hands, so we're not leaving greasy spots on the surface plate. I always like to wipe, wipe, wipe. I wipe with my hands, because you can feel it. There's dust in the air, you can feel it. I don't feel anything here. And when I put anything on it, I want to slide it on. For example, we're going to be taking our sign plate, which is part of our sign set system. We're going to slide that on. Again, sliding, wiping, clean. We need to set the angle for 30 degrees. I happen to know that the, the sign of that angle happens to be two and a half inches. So we're gonna get two and a half inches worth of gauge blocks and we're gonna set this baby up. Yep. When I use gauge blocks, I like to use my wrist to clean them because they seem to have the, and this is what I was taught as a kid, they have the right amount of oil on your wrist and you can wring them together. So now that we're gonna get down to the business part, I'm gonna put my safety glasses on, Jim. Uh, let's take these guys right here. Thank you. Okay. Also going to remove my watch. Don't want the watch in there. Can't remove the ring. Sorry, guys. The ring will not come off. So I don't know if you can get a shot of that, Glenn, but again, wipe, wipe, wipe. Wipe the bottom. Wipe the top. Wipe everything. Slide. Slide it on. Bring it down gently like that. That wasn't gentle. <laughs> you made me do that, Glenn. Now I'm going to lock it down. All right, so we're going to lock our locking strap down. You got a good shot of that? Yeah. And, you know, everybody likes to crank things down so there's 280 pounds of torque. Snug it. That's all you need to do. You don't need to crank it down like, like we're going to be bolting a a 454 Chevy block engine on this thing. We're not going to do that, so we're just snugging it down. Now we're going to take, again, wipe, wipe, wipe. We're going to take our master grind, we're going to set it on there, we're going to bolt it on. And there's a couple of ways of doing this. In this case, we want it to be this direction, obviously. And the beauty of the sign set system is there's no indicating involved. All you do is set the master grind and other tools as well on here, line it up with a couple of holes, take the bolts like this, drop them in, and bolt it down. I love it. Just bolts right down, no indicating required. And everything's within a couple of tenths. Don't you love that? Again, just snug it. That's all we need to do. So we've snugged it down. So now I think we can put our indicator on there. Wipe, 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 clean, clean, clean. All right, so can you, how about if I come around here where you can see this? you see that or no? Yeah. Here we go. So we're high a little bit right there. I'm going to snug that a little bit more. Now, not a lot, just a little more. I still want to be able to move it, but I'd like a little more resistance if I could. Go back in there and check it again.
There we go. That's within about four tenths. So I'm happy with that. And now we can tighten it down. All right. Now what we didn't talk about was, remember we talked about the ability to grind it on a surface grinder two different ways. And this is the way we're going to set it up on the surface grinder. And we're going to grind this 60 degree included angle. I've already dressed the wheel, so we're ready to go. I'm going to stone it off. I love, I love using these stones because you put two fingers on them and you can feel the burrs on the chuck. If you just use the two fingers and rub it back and forth gently, you'll be able to feel the little bit of burrs that are on there. This is a stone that we use. It's a wedge stone made by Norton. We love it. I break them in half, and that's all you need. This, the bigger stone, I just don't get the same feel that I do with my fingers. That's the art side. You know, we talked about the mechanic side and the art side. This is the art side. So let me stone the chuck off, and uh, I'll show you what we're, what's, what we're going to be doing next to set this up. I can feel, I can feel some burrs in there. I love this stone. To me, you know, and they get a little, little residue on there from the chuck. All you do is drop it in mineral spirits, brush it a little bit, and it's ready to go. So if it loads up, you don't have to throw the stone out. All you can do is clean it up, and you're ready to go the next time. Okay. All right, so I've stoned the chuck off, and uh, we've slid the sign plate on up against the rail. I like to eyeball it to get it close to being on center, and I think I'm pretty close right there, and I'm gonna lock this down. Now, I also, before I turn the wheel on, I wanna make sure that there's no interference when I rotate this. So it's, we're in good shape. It's not going to hit a thing. It looks great. So based on that, we can turn our wheel on and we'll bring it down. Oh, it's cleaning up nicely. So based on that, I'm going to take a little walk with it, give it a few more tents. I love the sparks. Bring it back out. We'll take a look at it, but I think we're good. Perfect. So there you have it. We ground our center nice and concentric. We'll shut our wheel down. We'll take a look at this. Get a good shot of that, Glenn? I'm happy with that, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take it over on our optical comparator. And we're going to put it up there, and we're going to double check the angle to make sure that it's 60 degrees, even though we know it is, because we set the sign plate. I mean, how much can it possibly be off, unless we grab the wrong gauge box, which is possible. So let's take it over to the quality control room. Let's give it a check. So here we go. we got our ground center. We're going to put it in the optical comparator just to make sure that it's at 60 degrees, although there's really no need for that because we had it set up on a sign plate. Uh, with the proper gauge blocks. However, if you made a mistake with the gauge blocks, this is where you're going to catch it. So if the gauge blocks are off, say you didn't grab the right ones, then your sign plate's not set right. So this is a good double check. So we'll, we'll set this up here and we'll slide this baby over. Make sure there's no boogers in there or no 
chips or anything that's going to interfere with it being sitting flat. Now we can rotate. That's our point of reference. So we can rotate this. All right, there's 60 degrees right there. And we'll crank this guy in. And I'm happy with that. That shows 60 degrees. So we're good, 60 degrees, 60 degrees center. It's perfect. So there's our double check. So as you can see, it really wasn't necessary to take it over here and put it on the optical comparator. But we did that to show you that this is another double check. Should you have been grinding the 60 degrees by dressing a 60 or 30 degree angle on the wheel, then I would say that that's pretty important that you take it and check it on the on an optical comparator, assuming that the angle uh, is critical. In, in our case, because this goes on a, a piece of inspection, it's important for us to make sure that the 60 degrees is accurate. So there you have it. We've shown you how to do it. Hope this is helpful.